Did you know you could keyframe when something shows up or doesn't show up in your final render animation? Let me show you what I mean. So in this animation, this was a little teaser that I made or an asset pack that I released over on my Patreon. I made it for this teaser and I also used it for this teaser. And you can see that it's essentially the same idea. But the cool thing is that nothing in this video is edited. No, no cutting and, or editing in any other kind of software. And I'm not even editing it in Blender's editor. I'm just hitting render and walking away. And this is what I get. So here is my scene in Blender. And you can see already these icons, the viewport and render icons are green. And that is because they have keyframes on them. And really the only side that matters is this right side. This camera icon is what gets rendered in blender like that's the final thing that you see the final image or mp4 or whatever this little monitor is what you can see so for example this plane here if i toggle this on and off you can see it's just what's in the viewport but this one is the one that you want to keyframe i keyframe both because i want to be able to see it in the viewport but if you trust the process you could just keyframe this and not worry about this so here's what it looks like if we go down to our keyframes, you can see that uh, it starts at one frame and right here, the keyframe is turned on. Because it's the beginning, you don't really need a keyframe to be on, but I have one for this. So you don't even need this keyframe. Like for example, I could just delete that. So it's visible and it's green. And as it plays along, here is the last keyframe that it will be visible. So this is turned on. And then when I switch over to the next one, it's gone. So what's happening here? This thing is selected. This is the last keyframe. This is the last like frame that it's enabled. And if you watch here and I move over, you see it turns off. But what happens is that the next one turns on. And I, that's how I have them offset. So as one thing is turning off, the next thing is the next frame, the next thing is turning on. I hope that kind of makes sense. So if we watch just this right here, and I play this back, you can see how it moves up, boop, boop. And it's happening in basically one frame. One thing is turning off and the next thing is turning on. And that's what's happening. All right, so you can see, ignore this up here. This is just like camera stuff. But down here are the objects. So it's one, two, three, four, five things. And you can see that it's basically turned on. And on this frame is the last frame that it's turned on. Then it turns off. As it's making that switch, from one frame to the next one. So as this one goes from on to being off, this one goes from off to being on. And then I have it play for five seconds and then have the same thing happen to the next object. So what helps with these teasers specifically is that every object is in the same spot. So it makes it really, really easy to have the things like popping in and out. But you can really do this for anything. You can kind of expand this to having lighting change or having the collections like turn on and off for certain lighting orientations. So you can render an animation that is like, in a sense, pre-edited. The other really cool thing about this is that you can, so once you have these objects turning on and off, um, you can continue working the scene if you want to make changes. So whereas normally you would render one orbit around each object and then have six renders and then chop them up, if you wanted to make, let's say, the camera animate or you wanted to switch the background out or anything, you'd have to go back and re-render that six, five times and chop it all up again. So this way, it's a little bit of setup in the beginning, but you can start changing the lighting. You can start building out the rest of the environment, having the camera do stuff. So you can see that the camera here is just rotating and the things in the middle are swapping in and out. If I wanted to have the camera focal length changing, mid animation or something, I can set that up in the render. So then I'm rendering out this kind of edited clip, but it has dynamic camera motion. It can have lighting changes. It can have, you know, anything else, you know, if you want to have something else fly by the screen or interact with the animation, you can have it do that. You know, you can also take this, this is still, this is not animated, but if I wanted to have this like be sliding around, you know, this could be like a really dynamic animation and you could 
probably do more than what I'm showing you with, but I hope it's kind of giving you a bit of an idea, maybe giving you like some inspiration for how you can use this in your next project. I don't know, maybe maybe this is just like a weird thing that's really not useful to anybody, but I thought it was really fun and I found a way, a really simple way for it to help me and then hopefully it can help you. So, uh, but yeah, if you like this video, just give me like a thumbs up or something like that in the comment or, or, or just say like, leave an emoji. I wish there was an emoji for like a sewer, uh, sewer, sewer access point, but I don't think there is. Is there an emoji for concrete? Actually, leave a, leave like a camera emoji. Leave a like, subscribe, and uh, tell your, um, tell your friend, tell your friend about this video. Even tell your friend who does not watch any blended content, who really doesn't really understand what you do or like why you're into art or like isn't really impressed by it. Bruh. Tell that friend about this video, and then have the, and just watch them be confused as it's like, why did you show me this? Um, yeah, do that. Okay, bye. Sorry, by the way, one last thing. If you want to download these assets, these like sewer drain assets that I'm showing in this video or the assets that I showed in the, earlier in the video, you can find those on my Patreon. Okay, bye. Sorry, one last thing. Patreon is also a really good way to support me and support this channel. Okay, bye.